Hello my friends, welcome to the metal shop. Uh, as you can see and as you can definitely hear, we are in the basement and I am bringing back, we're reviving the fast Eddie Clark from Motorhead, the Ace of Spades guitar. Um, it's funny in, a, in an ironic sense that um, about 10 days ago, I received a comment on this video. I've actually received quite a few comments on part one of this video saying, when's part two gonna come? You know, the fans seem really interested in the Fast Eddie Clark guitar and it, this video had been gaining some traction and I really do try and focus on the videos that people like. People love the Jeep videos, people love the guitar videos. They really like the videos where you're demonstrating, where you're playing the guitar, but that brings up a whole other can of worms with, you know, the internet tough guys, the trolls, and so on, but that's a whole other story. Anyway, about 10 days ago, I received another one. I'm like, you know what? It is time to revive this project. So I actually ordered some parts. Um, today's Monday, Martin Luther King Day. I ordered some parts last Saturday. Uh, my point is, I'll show you the parts. So I ordered the parts last Saturday. They came on Monday and Tuesday. And then on, I believe it was Wednesday, January the 10th, we learned of uh, Fast Eddie Clark's uh, untimely passing. Uh, he was only 67 years old. Looks like he died from complications and pneumonia peacefully in the hospital. Um, so I just don't want you to think that this, guitar, this project has been sitting here on the bench downstairs before he passed. I had the parts on order. I'm not doing it now. You know, I am doing it now in kind of a tribute to him, but that isn't, the re that isn't what galvanized me to start on this project. Again, apologize for the furnace. It's just going to be here. It's uh, 12 degrees here today in New England, so that sucks. So anyway, so I just, I, I, I've showed you the parts already that I already had. I needed a few more. Uh, I got a brass or gold-plated Strat cup. Um, I bought a Fender tremolo bridge. And this one is, of course, tape won't come off. This is off of a 54 reissue. It's got some nice wear on it. Looks pretty good. Um, perfect for this guitar. Now, Eddie changed a lot of his parts to brass, which was kind of the thing to do in the uh, late 70s, early 80s. You know, you're customizing your own guitar. So, but all these parts weren't available. The brass tremolo bridges were hard to come by. You certainly, you couldn't really get them in, you know, in 79. 80, um, Charvel, Stars Guitars, Kaler actually made a bunch of these things. Uh, right around that time, they started to become more prevalent. Anyway, his still had the chrome bridge, but it had a brass input jack. Of course, the brass pick guard, which you guys have seen, which I will demonstrate because I have to modify that out for a humbucker. And I bought this. This is just a cheap um, Asian, I think it's Dragonfire. Um, but Eddie Clark had cream pickups in his guitar and he changed out now depending on what version you want he had originally in the ace of spades video he had a black humbucker probably a gibson in it later on he had just a cream colored pickup uh, stands to reason it was a demarzio and then even later on yet again he went with a demarzio x2n so you could have an x2n you could have whatever black pickup you preferred or whatever cream pickup you preferred i have a cream bill lawrence pickup a double cream that I will probably put in the bridge position. But the reason I bought this, this is very inexpensive, about $55, $60, but it has everything. It has your pickups, has your pots, your switch. It's all wired. So I can transfer this over to the uh, brass pit guard and it will drop right in. This is also gives you 500K or 500 ohm pots, which it's not going to sound strat like. It's going to sound more like a super strat, more like a you know, a Jackson or guitars of today, but anyway, just a cheap option to get all the parts that I needed. So, we're actually getting ready to move this stuff right out of the way here. We're actually getting ready to start sanding. And I have this vibrating, it's not a palm sander, it's just a big old sander. I have a 220 grit on here. I actually prefer, now it would go a lot quicker with the heavier grits, um, you know, 180 or 120, but I prefer the lighter grits 
and sneaking up to it versus if you try if you went at it with 120 or even 80 grit you're going to leave huge um gouges in this you're going to leave huge craters and sanding marks that then you have to work up to your to your lighter grains of sandpaper i prefer to work a little harder with the lighter grains and that's just my my method of doing it you know your mileage may vary so uh, this is and I'll do a time lapse on this because I'm not sure how much sanding I'm actually going to accomplish. But there is a little bit of pucker factor here. I mean, this is only, a, I don't even know what the origin of this guitar is, if it's Mexican made or if it's Asian made, but it's perfect. Ah, the furnace stopped. Yay! Um, the finish is perfect, and it's a nice sunburst fender body. So, you know, we're about to attack this thing with... A sander so there is a little bit of a pucker factor involved in ruining this good finish but hey what the hell let's give it a go doing it for you Eddie What you can see from this is you see all the white there is a lot of clear on here so we may have to rethink i may actually have to go with the heavier grit um we'll see i'm going to give this a little bit uh, a little bit more here i'm going to stay here in the uh, the forearm cut out and see what we can accomplish <laughs> So you can see here, that just fell off the table, um, it cuts through on the edge. Now this would be a good finish here if you were going to paint this guitar a solid color over. But where we're going to make this, this is going to be a natural finish guitar with an oil finish. I need to get all of this finish off. I'm absolutely positively going to have to switch to a heavier grain of paper. So let's, uh, let's stand by. All right, so we switched a piece of 100 grit. This is an old piece. Probably doesn't have very much grain on it. It's probably about equal to that 220. I'm kind of unprepared. I don't really have heavier grits that fit. I thought I did, but I didn't have a piece large enough. I'm gonna give this a quick try, and uh, I'm gonna mercifully stop this video and have to go get some sandpaper. But I will... <laughs> So what you see is it's actually very thin on the edges and extremely thick along the top here. You know, these offshore guitars, they just put a ton of thick clear coat on, actually contributes to why a lot of them, not as a general rule, but a lot of them don't sound as good. They, you know, you need a nice, thin, hard finish, in my opinion, for a great sounding guitar. These really thick polyester clears just don't sound as good. So uh, I'm going to stop this video here. I'm going to have to get some, uh, get some more sandpaper and attack this thing. All right, my friends, take care. All right, so I did end up having one piece of 80 
So I'm going to do exactly what I said I wasn't going to do, and I'm going to put some heavy, deep scratches into the finish, um, and then have to work my way back up to the 220, which will probably be the last um, grain of sandpaper that I use. Um, but you can see I did some of those um, with a hand piece. This should make quicker work of this really, really heavy finish here. So let's see. Like a motorcycle. Oh, oh. So, I'm definitely going to give you a time lapse and not make you watch 10 minutes of sanding, but that was nearly 10 minutes, and you'll see I've actually done more than I need to because the pickguard will cover a lot of this. Uh, the 80 grit on the vibration sander is actually leaving a pretty decent finish. Now, I can leave this, and I may. Um, so, best stance to reason, so 10 minutes, easily at least another 10 minutes on the back side getting all the way around the edge and there's going to be some hand sanding involved there uh probably more like an hour to uh to do the whole thing and i will definitely show you the uh the finished results so cool hang in there my friends all right my friends so here is the carnage what did we find we found that the black hid some kind of imperfection down here Looks like they plugged it with some type of red uh, body filler here. Um, found some pencil mark up here. And I found that if you can see here on the belly cut, there's actually like a sanding sealer that kind of gives it this uniform look that we sanded through in some spots, unfortunately. So I may go over this whole thing with a a light stain to try and give it a more uniform appearance or maybe when we go to do finish sanding um, I'll go through all this sanding sealer I'm not sure but it came out nice on the top but like here is awful the black paint really came off hard and it removed a lot of the sanding sealer here on this edge but we got the whole face the whole back all the way around except for in here where uh, I'm gonna have to do that by hand, uh, maybe with a Dremel, um, something, you know, a sanding stick, something like that, to get into here. My hand is numb as hell. I know how the guys who operate chainsaws all day feel, or if you operate a weed whacker all day, this is what you feel like. Um, 
I, do I care about these imperfections? The sander skidded off a, a couple times. You probably heard that in the original uh, sanding video. Put some dings in it. Do I care? No. <laughs> in a word, no. This is going to be it's a, going to be a parts guitar. It's going to be a player's guitar. Like I said, I'll probably sell this one on. Probably not for a whole lot of money. You know, probably in the $500 range or so. It depends. Um, we'll see how it comes out. But as always, my friends, thank you for watching. I appreciate all the comments that I received about the uh, Fast Eddie Clark Motorhead Ace of Spades guitar. Um, please keep watching my videos. Subscribe. Uh, give a like. Give a share if you're so inclined. I do appreciate the support. I try and give you guys good videos that you want to see. All right, my friends. Thanks for watching. Rest in peace, Eddie. We love you, man. Take care. Bye. All right. So as usual, I like to provide just a tiny little bit of bonus footage. <laughs> so this is what I ended up using. You know, the, the large vibrating sander, which you saw. I used the Dremel Multimax just a little bit. Um, didn't really, probably would have been handy in a couple of spots, but I just ended up using this one. And I finished off with a regular old Dremel with a drum sander on it to get into the cutaways here, here and here. And it left some tiny little furrows that I'm going to have to uh, finish sand out. Um, you can feel them. You can't really see them, but you can feel them. Um, I have tried some stain on it in one spot, just some basic um, Ninwax natural. To kind of even it out, I, I tested it on a spot here. Looks pretty good. I'm probably going to go over the whole thing with that. I'm going to, this is just Hack Job Incorporated. I'm just going to experiment um, and try and get as close to, uh, to Fast Eddie Clark's uh, finish, the, you know, from photographs as I can. But I'm definitely going to use the natural first, you know, to give it a, an all uniform appearance. And uh, then I'll go from there. So hope you enjoyed this bonus footage of the finished product after sanding. And I'm going to leave the cavities and this little bit here. I think it's kind of cool just to show that it used to be a two-tone sunburst guitar. All right, my friends. Cool. Thanks.